Hello, hello, good morning everybody. How was everybody's fall break? Good, good. Seem short? All right. I'll wait, I'll wait a minute. I'm gonna go give her our time to say it. Hello, hello. You in the black shirt, down in front. Hello. <laughs> hey, okay. Brittany, I'm gonna get started. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I know you were. All right, so uh, welcome to week 10, which is crazy. Uh, the semester's flying by. Um, today we're gonna have a presentation about stress from Student Health Services. We started with that in a few minutes, but first let's go over what you've got come and do this week and what you need to be thinking about. So tonight is the chapter five reading quiz that you need to have done. Um, if you haven't done all of them, you, you need to think about you know, how those points do add up. Nobody wants to retake strategies. Um, you know, it's, it's a two hour credit class. You wanna get through it the first time. So, you know, make sure you do your reading quizzes. Um, do in your small group meeting this week is the general education roadmap. So if you haven't met with your advisor yet to go over the GE roadmap, um, you're running out of time really quick. If, if your meeting is, uh, is Thursday, you guys meet Thursday, right? Yes, no? Okay, so you've got like a day and a half to meet with an advisor if you haven't. So, you know, try to get that done. If you can't before it's due, um, you still need to do it. Talk to your instructor, see if they'll give you a little bit of leeway, if they'll give you some uh, e extra time or give you partial credit, but it's very important to do the general education roadmap so that you understand how to look through uh, you know, the roadmaps for different um, majors and that kind of thing on your own when you start trying to decide a major. Um, you want to be able to, to, to know how to do that and where to find things. Um, due Sunday night is the co-curricular activities blog number two. Uh, make sure you get that turned in. If you have questions about it, please ask your peer instructor or the instructor in your class on Thursday. And then also the general education roadmap discussion board is due on Sunday night as well. So that's something that you wanna be thinking about. And coming soon, the NSU resources scavenger hunt. Has anybody in this group finished that? A couple, okay. So in every group, we've had a couple of people who have finished it. Remember that there are prizes and that, you know, the first people to get it done win things. You're running out of time to be one of those people. So, you know, you wanna think about getting that done. Um, a reminder, yeah, if you haven't registered your iClicker through Blackboard, you need to do it. Um, if you haven't done that, when you, you know, push the button here, when questions come up, it's not counting you as here because it doesn't know it's you. Was anybody not here when we showed you how to do that a couple weeks ago? Everybody was here or they didn't hear me? Okay. Um, so if you have trouble with it, if it's not working, please let us know. We'll help you get that registered. And finally, um, when you share your Google Drive document um, with your instructor, share it with your instructor's email, uh, not barthj at NSUOK. Okay. Um, it's, it's just written uh, on there and it was, uh, it was uh, an oversight not to take that off. So some people are sending that in to uh, Dr. Ivy instead of to their instructor. Make sure it goes to your instructor. All right. so. Just like with every other present presentation that we have, um, you know, please give them uh, your full attention, the respect that they deserve. Uh, please put away your cell phones. Um, you know, you, you guys know the professional points and stuff like that. So uh, keep those 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 away. Um, you will need a calculator at some point, so nobody's going to be like, "Hey, get off your cell phone for a calculator." But as soon as that's done, please put it back up. Um, Without further ado, we have Allison and Ashley from Student Health Services, and they are going to talk to you today about stress. Thank you. Uh, my name is Allison. I am a registered nurse. I work here at Student Health Services. Uh, this is my second year with Student Health Services, which is a health clinic here on campus for the students. Um, before that, I've been a nurse for about 20 years. I have worked in the ER, ICU, and psychiatric units. That's my background. So I feel like I'm well versed to help you in the student health clinic if you came over and have some questions about your health or not feeling well or we see a variety of patients there at student health and we also have a nurse practitioner who is there and she serves and um, can do the majority of what a physician does and so it's a full student health clinic for you um, it's already been included in the cost of your tuition so when you come to see us most of the time it's there's no charge it will be free so take advantage of coming to see us over there.
But today we're going to talk about stress and feeling stressed out and how it affects your health. Okay. You're going to use the, uh, your clickers to answer in on this question. So are you stressed out? So it looks like the majority of you, 60%, said yes, a little bit. Now just remember in the back of your mind uh, how you answered because Ashley, she's from Student Health, she's our graduate assistant, and she's just about finished with her um, master's degree in health and kinesiology. And um, she has a survey here that, or a questionnaire we're going to ask you about how stressed you are. And I think you may be surprised at your answers. You may find out that you're actually a little bit more stressed than what you even know. What is your number one stressor? Go ahead and answer in. The majority, 64%, said school, of course. That's going to be your number one stressor. Okay, so how does stress affect the college student? Let's find out. Okay, I'm going to turn this portion over to Ashley. Okay, so I have a little stress survey, and it has different life events that have happened to you in the last year. So only um, put them as a score if you have had them happen to you in the last year. Um, can the peer instructors help me? And I'll tell you the instruct instructions after everybody gets them. Does everybody have one? Okay, so over here on the right side it says life event and then the first life event is death of a family member. So if that has happened to you in the last year, you would look over here at the value, and it's 100 points, so under score you would put 100 points. And you go to the next one, death of a close friend. If that has happened to you in the last year, look over at the value, it's 73 points, so under score you put 73. If it hasn't happened to you, you can either leave it blank or put a zero, and then you'll go through all the life events, and then at the end you'll total the score up. Okay. It sounds like we're almost done. So if you look at your total score and then right underneath it, it has mild stress and you are you have been experiencing mild stress if your total score is less than 150. If it is from 150 to 300, you have been experiencing moderate stress. And if it's over 300, you have been experiencing severe stress. So think back on the question that we asked you earlier about how much stress you are or you're feeling. If you said yes a lot or yes a little, um, is anyone surprised by their numbers? Or is it different from what they picked earlier? A little, maybe? Okay. All right, if you pass them down to the end of the row so that the peer instructors can pick them up for me. And make sure you put gender and age at the bottom. No. Okay, so our next question is, have you been to the Student Health Center? This can be if you just came over there with the orientation or if you've been over there to be seen. Okay, so 65% of you said yes and 35% said no. You should have been brought over during uh, your orientation to Student Health Services whenever they brought you around to all of the different departments. 
Okay, and this is a graph of the different stress levels between each age groups. And the traditional college age, 18 to 24, which is you guys, um, is under the most stress at 64%. And then as you get older, your stress level starts to decrease. Okay. How many of you have ever seen or looked on the internet at faces of meth? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty extreme, isn't it? It shows <coughs> what happens to people, how they look before they start on meth, and then when they usually get arrested and you have their mug shot. Six months, a year, 18 months, and the effect is dramatic. Now that's how meth affects the body and the looks. I've developed phases of stress. So we're going to look to see how stress affects the face. What do you think um, the most stressful job in the United States would be, or the most perceived? The president. The president. Absolutely. Um. <laughs> All right, so President Obama, after four years in office, you can see he has a lot of salt and pepper in his hair where he didn't have before. Um, the lines around his mouth have deepened. This is President Bush Jr. after four years in office. Now you can see there's a dramatic effect there. He's almost white-headed. He has some very deep lines in his forehead. I, li I picked this one of Clinton after eight years in office because to me it almost looks like a, a father-son type of photo, son-father. He looks so much older and aged. President Carter, after four years in office, he has quite the receding hairline. <laughs> President Johnson, after two years in office. All right, if you guys will remember back, Johnson took over when Kennedy was killed, right? So that's just after two years. Imagine the stress assuming that position. President Eisenhower, after four years in office. Okay. President Lincoln, before and after the war, the Civil War. How long did the Civil War last? A long time. <laughs> three, about three years, a little over, almost getting into four years, about, about three, like three and a half. To me, this photo is remarkably different. He looks like a totally different person. Now, hopefully, you guys won't have the amount of stress on you that the Civil War was on Lincoln or that the presidents have upon them, but you do still have quite a bit of stress in your life. You're, you've started a completely different life here. And so, hopefully today, what you'll get out of this lecture is we're going to give you some tips to manage some of that stress, maybe recognize some of that stress and how it's affecting your health. Okay? Now, we've already talked about the accelerating aging that we see on the face from stress, let's look at some of the other problems that would affect your health. Now, I think this would be a big one for college students, memory and focus problems. If you're so stressed that you're starting to have problems with your memory and your focus, you're not gonna be able to pay attention into your class, what the professor is saying during their lectures. Most of the time, I found when I, I was in college that whatever they are lecturing on, was on the test. So if I could just pay attention during class, I was going to do pretty good in that classroom. But if you can't remember or you can't even focus because you're so stressed, then you're not going to do successfully in that class. Feeling irritable, anxious, and depressed. Stomach problems, insomnia, accelerated aging. <coughs> Stress affects the mind, the memory and focus problems. Feeling irritable, anxious, and depressed. 86% of college students say they have felt overwhelmed. 81% of college students have felt exhausted. Okay. At any given point in time, most college students are stressed about something. It is just, it's just a part of going to school. While having stress in your life is normal and often unavoidable, being stressed is something you can control. Follow these tips to learn how to keep your stress in check and how to relax when it gets to be too much. So number one is our most important, and it's don't stress about being stressed. So whenever you get stressed out and overwhelmed about a project or a test or maybe a relationship, and you just start focusing on how much stress you're under, it only builds up, and you become more stressed out. 
So this may seem ridiculous at first, but it is listed first for a reason. When you're feeling stressed, you feel like you're on edge and everything is barely being held together. Don't beat yourself up about it too, too badly. It's all normal and the best way to handle stress is to not get more stressed about being stressed. If you're stressed out, admit it and figure out how to handle it. Focusing on it will only make things seem worse. Number two, get some quiet time. So if you think about how much your life has changed since you were in high school and living at home, having your own room and space, um, you were able to go in there and be by yourself and think and watch TV or whatever, just be by yourself. And now things are a lot different. So take a moment and think, when was the last time you had some quality, quiet time alone? Personal space for students in college rarely exists. You may now share a room and you may have never had a roommate before. Maybe you don't even have brothers and sisters. Uh, you share the bathroom, your classrooms, the dining hall, the gym, the bookstore, the library. Everywhere that you go on campus, there's pretty much always someone around. Uh, finding a few moments of peace and quiet with no cell phone, roommates, or crowds might be just what you need. Stepping out from the crazy college environment for a few minutes can do wonders for reducing your stress. And I know that the gym is on here, um, but the Fit is free for you guys to use. I don't know if you know that. You can go down there, put on your headphones, get on the treadmill, the bike, or just lift some weights or go out for a run. That's good quality time by yourself just to think and not have to worry about talking to anyone. Number three, get some distance. You may be handling your own problems and trying to help others around you. While this can be nice for them, check in and be honest with yourself about how your helpful demeanor may be causing more stress in your life. It's okay to take a step back and focus on yourself for a little while, especially if you're stressed and your academics are at risk. After all, how can you keep helping others if you're not even in a state to help yourself? Figure out which things are causing you the most stress and how you can take a step back from each. And then, most importantly, take that step. So whenever there's other people around, like your friends or your family, who may be having problems too while you're having problems with school or you're just stressed out and you're taking on their burdens you're kind of putting more stress on yourself so it's not really helpful to just take on their burdens so try to help yourself de-stress before you try to help others number four get a little help on campus um we offer counseling service it's called hawk reach it's located right by housing it's also a free service you can go in there at any time, talk to them about whatever you're, want or whatever you're needing, uh, no matter how small, big, silly, um, they don't care. You can come in and talk to them. You can also come over to us at Student Health Services, and we can help you get set up with the right people to talk to. Um, it can be hard to ask for help, and unless your friends are psychic, they may not know how stressed out you are. Most college students are going through the same things at the same time, so don't feel silly if you need to just vent for 30 minutes over coffee with a friend. It may help you process out what you need to do and help you realize that the things you're so stressed about are actually pretty manageable. If you're afraid of dumping too much on a friend, like I said about Hawk Reach, um, these places are specifically set up for you guys to come in, have a safe place to talk, it's confidential. So don't be afraid to make an appointment because that's what we're here for. Number five is a huge thing with college students, <laughs> insomnia and not getting enough sleep. So we recommend Put, making an effort to get enough sleep. Being in college means your sleep schedule is most likely far from ideal. Getting more sleep can help your mind refocus, recharge, and rebalance. This can mean a quick nap, a night when you go to bed early, or a promise to yourself to stick with a regular sleep schedule. Sometimes one good night's sleep can be all you need to hit the ground running amidst a stressful time. Okay, everyone stand up, please. All right, that part was a little laborious, can start to bog you down with the information, so we're just going to de-stress our body here, okay? And if everyone can reach up, big and tall, take a big deep breath. Okay, now bring down your arms and blow it out. Ooh, one more time. And down, good. And you can wiggle around, move yeah. around a little bit if you need to. <laughs> That's good. All right, go ahead and have a seat. OK, 
Okay. All right, so what are some of the complications of insomnia? Not getting a good night's sleep. Uh, I hear that I have some sports, some athletic groups over here. All right, what happens if you're not getting the rest that you need? Are you going to be able to perform, to do your job on the, in the sports realm? No, you're going to have lo lower performance, slower reaction times. Uh, college students in general, you're not getting enough sleep. That puts you at risk for depression or anxiety disorders. Poor immune system function. Some, uh, and then it starts to affect our organs as well. Okay, these are my five ways to fight insomnia. First of all, if you plan on going to bed at 10 o'clock at night, try to not have any caffeine about two hours before you go to bed. Because if you're drinking Red Bull and Coke and whatever else right up to the time you're going to sleep, that's going to keep you awake and you're not going to get a restful night's sleep. Try relaxing before bed. Just those simple stretches that we just did there and some breathing techniques, some light yoga. Um, you may think, yoga's not for me. Do I have any baseball players? What do you guys do on Thursday? Yoga. yoga. Has it helped your performance level, do you feel like? Yeah. No, yes. <laughs> you need to do more yoga. <laughs> so it helps, it helps stretch. It helps give you flexibility. But at night, you don't, you don't have to be a yoga master. You don't have to know a lot of moves. Just some light stretching to help you relax and refocus your mind and hopefully just relax you to prepare you for a good night's rest. Masking outside noises. Sometimes, now I have a problem with insomnia, I will lay in bed and every little noise that I hear, uh, it'll make me think of something. I hear a creak in the floor, then I might think, oh, I need to go take the kids out to the river this weekend. And, oh, no, I need to get some arrowheads. No, maybe I need to go to Arrowhead Mall. You know, that's the way the mind works. So maybe if you don't hear those outside noises by simply just using some earplugs, that will help. It has helped me. I was at the point where I thought maybe I needed to look at some medication. No, I didn't want to do that. I don't like to put medicine in my body that hopefully I can reset my body myself. So just some earplugs, and it has worked wonders. Maybe a white noise, like a fan, a ceiling fan. You may not have that in your dorms, and maybe you had that at home, and you just you didn't realize maybe that's just the one thing that I need, just a little bit of hum or buzz from that white noise. The white noise comes from when you're in your mother's womb and you heard, heard the as a child growing and developing there. That's a comfort mechanism. When we hear that similar type of rhythmic noise, it relaxes you and makes you feel protected and safe and you should be able to rest better. Try to clear your head. Anxiety is a stimulant. If you're sitting there thinking about everything you did all day long, everything you need to do tomorrow and the next day, that's not, you're just going to be working up your anxiety. If you can keep maybe a pen and a notebook by your bed or even your phone and you can go to your notes and write down whatever it is that you're thinking about that you remember that you need to do, a reminder, write it down. And once you write it down, maybe you've processed that, you can set it aside and go ahead and get a good night's sleep. And lastly, clear out the electronics. Um, sometimes even the tiniest light will prevent you from getting some sleep. Um, you may have to just put a sheet or something over your phone or your monitor, your computer monitor, or whatever, your alarm clock. Um, just kind of masking out that little tiny bit of light that could be keeping you from getting a good night's sleep. Okay. Some of the other common, common problems that we see as student health services, a weakened immune system. Probably last month, I probably saw at least 75 students that we ended up prescribing antibiotics because it might have started out with the allergies or a cold, but because they were so stressed maybe, they had a weakened immune system and they ended up having an ear infection, a throat infection, a sinus infection. So if maybe if you can manage your stress better and man when you see yourself getting a cold, start managing your stress as well. And maybe it won't lead to the other things when you need antibiotics. Stomach and digestive problems, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, stomach ulcers, eating disorders, this food that you're eating now may be a lot different than the food that you used to eat before you came to school. You may not have the same opportunities to be able to eat at the same time a day that you were. 
They say that if you can eat six small meals throughout the day, that will help your digestive order. You say, how in the world am I gonna find time to do that? Uh, I had a student, he was having a lot of stomach problems. Well, as I got to speaking with him, he only had just a little bit of time through the day to get to the cafeteria and eat. And when he did, he ate that one meal for the day at that time. He ate everything that he was gonna eat right then. Well, that led to some stomach problems for him. So we found some ways to get to, he could get some different resources for food that he could eat at different times throughout the day. And it can just be a package of crackers or an apple or a banana that you stick in your backpack. When you manage your stress, you manage your life. And as a direct result, you effectively manage your health. You help us at Student Health Services by keeping you healthy. And if you can recognize your stress and manage it before it starts to manage you. Um, just to let you know, some of the other services that you may not be aware that we can do at Student Health Services, it is a full health clinic. Um, some of the medications that you may have been on before you came and maybe it's time to renew those and you're stressed about when you can get time to go back home to go see your doctor to get a renewal on those prescriptions. Call our office, make an appointment to see the nurse practitioner. There's no cost to you to do that. And she'll get you started back on your medicine so you don't have that stress of trying to worry about whatever medicine you usually take and now you're about to run out of your prescription. Um, anything, she does health physicals, if you need that for sports. Um, if you're feeling really bad and you don't know what's wrong with you and we end up having to do some lab work, there are some no small nominal fees for that, but we can help you set it up through your um, Bursa account so you can pay it. That you don't have someone to help you here on campus, the ER, always come to Student Health Services first or give us a call. I'll be more than happy to speak with you over the phone if you can't get over there to see maybe if we can come up with a solution to whatever issue you may be having. Uh, it may be as simple as a new little brown spot came up on your arm. You never had that before. You don't know what it is. You don't know why it's there or a little bite. Could this be a spider bite? Is it going to get infected? Some of those just simple things. You can come see me for that. There's not going to be a charge and we'll talk to you about that. Um, also, some of you, as freshmen, you may be experiencing some of your first sexual encounters, um, and you may not have ever been able to speak with somebody about those tough issues. Sometimes that's hard for parents. They may have not told you things. Um, as young females, when you turn about 19 to 20, your menstrual cycles may change. When you get under stress, your menstrual cycles may change, and you may not know what, why are my menstrual cycle is changing. Just some simple questions like that. Um, that's what we're here for. So. Oh. I would like to tell you that um, if you like to get the flu shot, you normally get it every year. Um, the government has slowed us down a little bit this year and they did not, usually we have the flu shots here and we've already given them by now. But they're not gonna release them to us in the small clinics until around the 1st of November. So we have coordinated with Walgreens and tentatively we're looking at a date of October the 30th. We're gonna do Boo on the Flu where you can come by and get your shot. Um, if you have insurance or your parents' insurance, if you can just bring that information with you. Um, they said that most insurances, there will not be a charge for that so you could, where you could get it free. Um, if you have to end up paying for it, there would probably be a charge somewhere around $20 is what they told me. And I know for the athletic department, I'm working on actually getting, they are sending me a few shots. So we're working on some of your coaches like you guys to just come in and get a shot. So we'll take care of you there. Any other questions? I guess that's all we have, Olaf. Thank you. All right, so thank you guys for giving your attention and staying off your phones like you did. Uh, most of you did really, really well, so um, we appreciate that. Um, remember what we talked about at the beginning. Uh, don't forget to get the stuff turned in. Don't forget to get stuff done. Um, you get to leave early today. Have a good uh, rest of your week, and we'll see you back here next time. <laughs>